Welcome to Just Asia, HRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Police in India harass Hindu women for friendship with Muslim men. Police torture and abuse continues in Papua. Pakistan urges China to ease pressure on minorities. Human Rights Watch launches new webpage urging for release of Cambodian prisoners. Vietnam jails school teacher for 14 years. UN lists 38 shameful countries for reprisals against activists. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I'm Alexandra. This week, Just Asia begins with India, where three police constables were suspended in an incident that went viral. A few days ago, a video showing four constables in the state of Uttar Pradesh slapping and abusing a woman in a car for befriending a man of another religion went viral. The video shows them questioning the Hindu woman about her friendship with a Muslim man. The police allegedly apprehended the couple after being tipped off by a right-wing group. The couple was later released and the state police swung into action to suspend the cops. This is once again an example of the police being used to fulfill majoritarian, secretarian and patriarchal motives instead of being the protectors of the rule of law. Next. More than three years under President Joko Widodo's administrations, Papua and West Papua province have yet shown significant progress in human rights protection. The police and military abuse of power and violence is still dominant and a significant factor contributing to various human rights violations in Papua and West Papua provinces. This is largely due to the prevalence of security forces in the area, which the government is reluctant to evaluate and audit. Torture and extrajudicial killings continue to occur in Papua, such as the torture of 15-year-old Albert Nawipa, a junior high school student who was abducted and tortured by three police officers in Potikalek Market in Wamena. The police accused him of attacking a dancing show in Potikalek and he was subsequently hospitalized. Another example is the case of brutal shooting and violence committed by the Pania Police Mobile Brigade against local indigenous Papuans in Onebo, South Tiji District, Deya Regency. Security forces shot dead five students and injured 17 others. And yet, this case has not yet been investigated or prosecuted. Most recently, Papuan police have arrested and detained a Polish tourist together with indigenous Papuans in Pankat Jaya, Papua. In all the above cases, the victims were detained without arrest warrants or a summon letter being proffered. The lack of oversight mechanism contributes to the lack of accountability of law enforcement officials in Papua and also weaknesses in the criminal justice institutions. Next, Pakistan has urged China to ease pressure on the country's Muslim minorities. China's Uyghur Muslims currently face strict restrictions on religious activities and mass detention in so-called re-education camps. Pakistan's Minister for Religious Affairs, Nurul Haqqadri, met Chinese representative Yao Xing earlier this week to discuss the treatment of the Uyghur population in China's western Xinjiang province. Human Rights Watch earlier this month released a report on China's oppression of Xinjiang's Muslim, which represent new evidence of mass detention, torture and mistreatment of the region's Muslim minority. The report estimates an indefinite detention of an estimate 1 million people in political education camps. The report also describes incidents of torture during interrogation to obtain confessions or information. Mr. Kadri said the treatment of the religious minority could foment reactionary extremist views and urge Beijing to take concrete steps to address the issue. Pakistan's appeal is significant, given that the two countries enjoy good ties. Moving to Cambodia, Human Rights Watch has launched Political Prisoners Cambodia, a new webpage that profiles 30 prisoners jailed in the country by Prime Minister Hun Sen. Having ruled for 33 years, Hun Sen added five years to his tenure in July elections after banning the opposition. The Cambodian government should immediately and unconditionally release all those detained for peacefully exercising their fundamental rights, Human Rights Watch said in a statement launching the Political Prisoner webpage. 
according to the leading rights watchdog. Recent release and pardons were merely attempts to regain international legitimacy after shame elections. The threat of being sent back to prison on other charges shows that the recent releases are just a piece of political theatre and does not represent any change in Hansen's approach to critics, said Brad Adams, Asia Director at Human Rights Watch. Hansen has made a practice of heavy-handed crackdowns on his critics, followed by a relaxation of restrictions after facing international condemnation. A court in northern Vietnam has sentenced a former primary school teacher to 14 years in prison after finding him guilty on charges of attempting to overthrow the communist government. Dao Quan Tuck, 58, was convicted of posting on his Facebook page articles with reactionary contents. The official Vietnam news agency reported. The People's Court in Hobin province last Wednesday also convicted him of associating with a California-based exiled anti-communist group called the Provisional Central Government of Vietnam which the Hanoi government declared a terrorist organization. The court also ordered Tuck to serve five years of house arrest following his sentence. Dozens of activists have been convicted for violating the national security law since the beginning of the year. Last month, a court in Ho Chi Minh City sentenced 12 activists, including two Americans of Vietnamese descent, to up to 14 years on similar charges. The United Nations listed 38 shameful countries, including China and Russia, which had carried out reprisal or intimidation against people cooperating with it on human rights. The annual report from UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres also included allegations of ill treatment, surveillance, criminalization, and public stigmatization campaigns targeting victims and human rights defenders. The world owes it to those brave people standing up for human rights who have responded to requests to provide information to and engage with the United Nations to ensure their right to participate is respected, Guitars wrote. The report was presented to the Human Rights Council last week. The 30 countries included China, India, Burma, Philippines and Thailand in Asia. Governments frequently charge human rights activists with terrorism or blame them for cooperating with foreign entitles or damaging the state's reputation or security, it said. Women cooperating with the UN have reported threats of rape and being subject to online smear campaigns. Some of the countries listed are current members of the Human Rights Council, which adopted a resolution last year reaffirming that everyone, individually or in association with others, had a right to unhindered communication with the UN. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on this and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia/justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.